welcome to Bellingham Castle here in the village of Castle Bellingham in County Loud. My name is Patrick Cruscadden. I'm the youngest member of the Cruscadden family who own and operate the castle. And what we're going to do today is take you on a tour of the magnificent Bellingham Castle behind us. The castle itself dates from 1694. Uh, it was the original home of the Bellinghams. Um, the original castle was built, that was situated on this site, was built in 1658 and was occupied by the O'Brien family. Uh, they were ousted in, under Cromwellian rule and the Bellinghams were put in place. On the night before the Battle of the Boyne in 1690, the original castle was burnt to the ground as uh, the Jacobites invaded the grounds here. And in the original castle, it is reputed that William stayed on the grounds of the castle on his way to the Boyne area for the Battle of the King James. The Bellinghams were here until the 1950s, at which point the castle was taken over by the Land Commission and was purchased by the Meehan family, who converted the castle into an operational hotel. They then in turn sold the castle on to the Keenan family in the early 1960s, and the Keenan family successfully ran the hotel until 2006 as a commercial property. We took the castle over in 2012, renovated it from top to toe, and that's what we're going to have a look at today. We're going to have a look at the castle itself, inside some of the rooms in the castle, and particular focus on some of the architectural, historical elements of what we were able to retain. So follow me as we pop inside. Now, here we are, we've just come through the front door of the castle and we're into the front lobby of the castle itself. And the first feature we're going to have a look at is the magnificent fireplace. It's a huge benefit to the castle here and it was a real welcoming gesture for people walking through the front door. And it was something that was lost when the castle was a commercial property. The main fireplace was boarded up for the many years that the castle ran as a hotel and in our refurbishments in 2013 we were able to re-expose the fireplace. We had to replace the facade that you see in front of you now but that's a massive addition to the castle and for everybody who comes in through the front door. So follow me and we're going to pop into the Mappertandy Lounge house. So here we are in the Mappertandy Lounge. This is a room that would have been the original morning room of the castle. We have our bay window directly ahead of us here, and it's east facing. So the sun rises here in the morning, and it would have captured any morning light coming into the house itself. That would have been a room that the original Bellingham family would have had designed to have breakfast in and take morning teas and coffees in. And one of our first features we have, if we look up to the ceiling up here, we have our rose situated in this room. The rose would have represented, if we look very closely at it, You've got one which is a rose, another which is a leek, another which is a thistle, and another which is a shamrock. They're the little arms that are sticking out from the centre of the rose above our heads. And they would have represented the union between the British Isles at the time when the house was an original home. And if we come across into the room next door, we can see just the, the size of the expanse of this room. So we have the Napertandy Lounge, which incorporates the two rooms that we would have here, and elements of the original building that we were able to retain with the refurbishments that we did was the rose, as we spoke about above my head, the coving which you have situated around the top of the ceiling up above our heads here as well. Another feature of this room would be what we were able to retain was the original fireplaces. One on the left hand side of the room here and then directly behind us is the grey slate on the other side of the room. So, follow me here now and we're going to pop out to the main hallway of the castle itself. So, to give us an idea of how the castle is laid out, if we look directly ahead of us down to the two doors at the very end of this hallway, what we have here is the middle hallway of what is a three-storey building. If we pop through the archway directly ahead of us, just beyond our beautiful search, our, our, our Irish Wolfhound, 
Through the archway directly out of us, on the left hand side of that archway, we have our main staircase for the house. If we head up the stairs, it's going to take us to our bedrooms located directly above our heads, a long hallway up there. And if we head downstairs, it will take us to the lower ground floor down below. And again, another long hallway situated down there. So that's architecturally how the castle has been laid out. And it's quite easy to navigate your way around the castle, which is unusual for the building of this age. So if we pop on down here, now our next room that we're going to pop into is our dining room, which is situated just through here. So this would have been the original dining room of the castle. You have the beautiful bay window directly in head ahead of us, which is southwest facing and would have been is ideal for sunsets later on in the evening. Some original features to this room would have been the coving which is situated around the ceiling or directly above our heads. It is something we had to be very careful not to do any damage to when we did the original refurbishment to the castle itself. Another feature in this room is the fireplace. Again, an original fireplace that we were able to retain. And retaining elements of the original castle was hugely important to us because as the decades went by and the castle was a commercial property in the 60s, 70s and 80s, a lot of the original features were lost. So when we did the refurbishment to the castle, it was more of a, a renovation more so than a refurbishment. And what we had done was an endeavour to get some of the architectural features back into the original ruins that we have situated, which were lost when it was a commercial castle in the 60s and 70s, when such elements weren't very important. But if we follow us now, we've got a good example in the next room we're going to have a look at, which is our library room. And it's a room that will really kind of emphasize the type of refurbishments that we did and the extent of the refurbishment that took place. So our next room here is our library room. And the library room is a room, again, it's a lovely little feature room that we have situated here in the castle. Again, the fireplace is an original fireplace. It was part of this original room. And to give us an idea of the extent of the refurbishments that took place here in the castle, this room itself used to be the original ladies and gents toilets of the hotel when it ran as a commercial property. When we came into this room itself, the fireplace was completely hidden behind a fall tour that had been tiled over. So it's quite a transformation and this room would probably be the best room to represent the differences between how the castle ran as a hotel from the 1950s until we were able to do a full refurbishment on the castle itself. Our next room we're going to have a look at is the archery room, which is situated beside the library. And this room would have got its name from the fact that it was an archery back when the castle was a private home. So now we have it as a little lounge room for people to come in and sit down and enjoy and relax. But again, it's north facing, so it doesn't take in the degree of natural light that the other rooms would have that we've seen. So follow me, and we're going to go back out onto the main hallway of the castle. And our next room, next area we're going to have a look at, is the main staircase for the house. So as I mentioned, we've come through the archway, which is situated halfway down this middle floor of the castle. And we have the main staircase for the house, which is like a little tower that's built onto the outside of the property. And if we head upstairs, it'll again take us to the long hallway upstairs where the bedrooms are. And if we head downstairs, it will take us to the lower ground floor downstairs. And that's where um, we've got some more lounges situated. So follow me and we're going to pop down, not the main staircase, but another staircase that we have what we did, just beside our reception desk here. We refer to this as the green staircase. You'll see that now as you come through. It takes us to the lower ground floor situated downstairs, so follow me down here. So here we are on the lower ground floor of the castle, which would have originally been a servant's area where a lot of the below house work would have taken place for the original family. When we did our refurbishments to the castle, this was the area that we did the most amount of work to. 
This area had been the family residence of the Keenan family, the family I had mentioned that ran the castle from the 1960s until the present day. So we had to incorporate this area of the castle back into a part of the original castle building, which over the, the decades from the 60s to the 90s was really a private residence. And it started off with this first room we have beside us, which is called the O'Brien Bar. So here we are on the lower ground floor, and the first room we're going to pop into is the O'Brien Bar. So follow me. So here we have the O'Brien Bar, and this area of the castle would have been one of the rooms that required the most amount of work when we talk about the refurbishments that took place when we took over the castle in 2013. This area of the castle would always have been reserved for staff and was a private living quarters when the castle ran as a commercial hotel throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. So there was a massive amount of work to incorporate this back into the castle that you see here today. It's called the O'Brien Bar because the O'Brien family were the original family who took over this area of County Loud and were ousted in Cromwellian times. And the estate was gifted to the Bellingham family from Oliver Cromwell. And uh, that was in roughly 1658. So if we follow me down here, we'll have a look at the rear side of the bar. So here we are in the rear of the bar. And one of the lovely features of this room was the French doors that we have located on the lower side of the castle here, which leads us out to our rose garden and patios situated outside. And if you'd like to follow me, I'm going to take you into the next room we have, which is our casemate room. So give us an idea of where we're situated here at present. If we look down, the hallway here. This is the long corridor that we spoke about when we were upstairs when we came through the front door of the castle. It's the lower ground floor and it replicates, replicates the hallway that we saw upstairs with the black and white tiles. We're directly below that hallway. And this room that we have that we're going to pop into now, with a little step up into it, is called the casemate room. The casemate room is the room that's referred to being the room at the base of a tower in an old house or castle and hence this room is called the casement. We were able to retain in this room the original fireplace and the bay windows and sash windows that we have behind us and this is the only room in the entire castle that was able to retain the original floors which is the, 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 the oak wood floor beams that we have here running in front of the fireplace. So we're going to pop into our next room, which is true here, and we have our buttery. A little feature room which sits on top of our cellars, which are located just here. What we have if we pop down the stairs is a small vaulted ceiling room with our cellars down below, and that's where the majority of the wines that we have at present are kept. There we are. So we'll pop back out onto the main hallway. And if you'd like to follow me down, we're going to pop down to some interesting rooms we have down here on the right hand side. So we're kind of situated in the centre of the castle on the lower ground floor at present. And the next two rooms we have is our boiler room and buttery kitchen. We'll start with the boiler room, which we have directly ahead of us. Now an interesting little room, what this would have been was the original boiler room of the castle. Directly ahead of us, we have the little alcove with our fairy lights in place at the present. And what that would have been was an original coal bunker of the original house when it was a private home. You'll see a little hole directly above, and that's where the coal would have been dropped down the chute and into this bunker area. This would have been the original coal bunker of the house when it was a private estate. 
The coal would have been taken from the room we were just in and positioned into this area here, which was operated a large furnace, which was located in the kitchen next door. With the renovations that we did, we just made a feature out of that as it's no longer operational at present. And if we pop into the room beside us, we have the buttery kitchen. Again, would have been an original staff kitchen of the main house, with a lot of the food being prepared down here and brought upstairs to the dining room we saw when we first arrived into the main building door itself. Um, it's a little feature room again that we use here in the castle at present, and with what we did, it was a refurbishment job that we did to this area here, as this room had developed into a, a, a unbelievable laundry room and we uh, took over the castle back in 2006. So again, working off the original plans of the castle and what we were able to locate through the historical files, we were able to renovate this and make it a lovely feature kitchen. So, okay, so follow me, and we're going to hop outside now and have a look at our main four rooms. So we're back onto the main hallway of the lower ground floor, and if you follow me along this way. We're going to take you down to what we call our Butte Suite, which is the main ballroom of the castle itself. So if we pop through the doors, we'll have a look and see what we have to offer in here. This is the main Butte Suite. And this is where the ballroom of the castle is located at present. Now, if we turn around and have a look at the fireplace, which is directly behind us, that is one of the original fireplaces that was in the castle when it was a private home. And to kind of give us an idea of architecturally how this room was laid out, if we take into account this pillar which we have situated right here, Coming across, all the way across here, to the other pillar which is situated here. This was an original dining room of the house. And what you had from this area over here was a courtyard area. And this is where the original horse and carriages would have pulled into the castle, with entrance doors coming into this dining room area here. And this would have been a long, narrow dining room that you would have it situated. And we have uh, photographic records of this room as a small dining room that date back up until the early 1900s with the fireplace in situ. A, there was a roof put onto this outer courtyard area in the, um, the early 1980s and it was converted into a small ballroom that uh, was used back when the, the castle was a commercial hotel. And there we are. That concludes our tour of Bellingham Castle. It was fantastic to be able to show you around and we hope to invite you all back here soon. Thank you.